this class we're gonna talk about active filters and it is the last section of um, chapter 14 and it fits really well with 285. So in 285 we did a lot of inverting amplifiers that uh, had resistors um, hooked up to the input and as feedback resistors and we derived the transfer function even though at that point we did not call this h of s or h of omega you only called output over input and used to be minus rf over ri now the generalization of that inverting amplifier is that we have two impedances here so either we're going to put a capacitor here in parallel with the resistor or we're going to put a capacitor here in series with the resistor um, to make low pass and high pass filters and instead of passive filters that only have RLCs we're gonna now use op amps and that's what defines uh, the filter to be active um, the main advantage is that we can add gains um, often when you're filtering signals you don't want to lose um, energy in the main um, pass band of the filter you want actually to increase um, the signal for those frequencies and you can um, only do that with active filters so with passive filters you're always use, always using up energy um, there's often no inductor needed even though you, you may see some active filters where people do put inductors but inductors super expensive hard to find so we want to get away from that and the last advantage is that it's a larger design space that means you can put several filters back to back several low pass filters actually and make it um, much more steep the the band reject so the part the frequencies you're rejecting uh, will have a 0 0.0001 gain like a minus 100 dB gain as opposed to a passive filter that you can't really do that with the only problem is that you do need power for the op amp um, Often when you're designing a system like this, you do have uh, power available. So this, this small weakness is um, often disregarded in filter design. So any uh, filter that we do will have this kind of uh, configuration for the op amp, but I will solve one by hand uh, like we did in 285. using those two principles of op amps, which are the uh, voltage on the uh, positive input is mirrored to the negative input and vice versa. And the input currents are zero, both of them. So now I have VI here and VO here is taken against ground. Now I'm gonna add a capacitor, so if you remember Chapter 7, I'm not even sure we talked about this, but um, oh, differentiators and integrators um, in time domain. So this is VI, this is the RI, RF, and this is C. I'm going to call this CF. And my objective here is to show to you the um, V out over V in, which is very similar to ZF over. ZI, um, but in, using the method as in 285. So this ground here means that this voltage in this node will be zero. I'm going to consider a current going this way and current going this way. So I'm going to do an older analysis um, or you know just KCL here, which means the voltage across RI um, equals this plus this so it's really the current across ri i don't know if you can see it i'm gonna use a thicker pen equals i rf plus icf and i'm gonna write the voltages there um, which is VI over RI is um, zero. So remembering that this is zero, it's minus VO over RF. 
minus VO over 1 over SCF and from here I'm going to keep this V over RI V over RF and minus SCF VO V over RI is one plus S C F R F over R F. So I'm putting the minus V O here on the side. And I'm going to uh, try to do VO over VI, which is really what I'm looking for, the, the trans transfer function. So if VO stays here, the output V0 stays here, and, and VI goes on the uh, denominator, this minus is still there, minus RF over RI. Uh, times 1 over 1 plus S C F R F and this shows that uh, there is a from here I know that the gain for the passing frequencies here is the uh, minus R F over R I but the cutoff frequency is the same as what we had looked at before well, not sure. We looked at this before, and basically, uh, the the feedback resistor with the capacitor define which frequency the um, the slow pass filter uh, cuts off at. But then I can still put a a gain on it that's only dependent on R F over R I. So this is a uh, low pass active filter and it has uh, one pole so this is a first order oh I can't it doesn't fit here first order low pass active filter I will let you it's already a seven minute video really long I'll let you uh, solve and I think the book must have also this as um, as a solved example, why and how this is a, uh, a high-pass filter. So this is RF, this is CI, RI, and this is VI and VO. Uh, I'd like you to find H of S and to find the cutoff frequency for this, and this is a first order high pass active filter and it turns out if you want to make a second order high pass active filter you can take this as a block and repeat it right after it same thing with the low pass you could put this as a block next to it and this is what we're going to do in the um, next video to make a band pass uh, filter by making by combining a low pass with a high pass. So if you had 285 with me, you, you remember cascade amplifiers, you remember how to design a function with several amplifiers um, cascading. This is exactly what we do uh, designing filters and uh, simulating sequences of uh, op amps with uh, RCs mm, in ways that we, we match up the requirements of the design.